Hello, I'm Nakia Basharuddin and this is Nightline, the top stories. Government mulls over plan to allow university students to return home during MCO period. And Malaysia reports 54 more COVID-19 recoveries. Welcome. The government is considering to allow university students to return to their hometowns once a standard operating procedure, SOP, for doing so has been identified. National Security Council's Senior Minister for Security Cluster, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob, said further discussions between the Higher Education Ministry and Health Ministry to draw up the SOP would be carried out soon. Hari ini kita telah mendapat pandangan ya selepas mendapat pandangan daripada Kementerian Kesihatan. Mereka telah berada di kampus ataupun di kolej mereka lebih daripada 28 hari. Ya. Jikalau kita di kuarantin dua kali 14 hari ini masih tidak bergejala, kita boleh menganggap bahawa mereka tidak ada uh, Tidak ada jangkitan COVID-19 ini. He said the SOP would be scrutinized on how to manage some 100,000 students leaving their campuses so as to avoid congestion, citing an example of numerous buses stopping at highway rest areas which could pose a problem. He later clarified that there was no timeline on the announcement of the SOP yet as it might involve COVID-19 screenings on all the students, which could take a long time. Datuk Sri Ismail also said that the services provided by the Immigration Department and other agencies at the Johor Causeway have been revised to 12 hours daily instead of the previous 24-hour operation period. He said the shortened operating hours will take effect beginning Friday. Masa operasi custom uh, immigration dan lain-lain agency di bangunan Sultan Iskandar dipendekkan daripada 24 jam sebelum ini kepada 7 pagi sehingga 7 petang bagi pergerakan masuk rakyat Malaysia daripada Singapura. Ianya juga termasuk kenderaan komersial. Operations at the second link will be as normal, which is 24 hours, including for commercial vehicles such as lorries and cargo. He added those facing emergencies can also travel via the second link during the causeway's non-operating hours. The Defence Minister also reported that there has been no mass entry involving Malaysians coming from Singapore, adding that for the past four days, the average number of returnees is around 400 people daily. He also said there are around 6,000 rooms at 22 quarantine centres around Johor Bahru and the plan is to increase the number of rooms to 10,000. At the same media conference, Datuk Sri Ismail revealed that 946 people were arrested on Monday for defaulting on the MCO. It brings the cumulative number of arrests up to April 20th to 16,870 individuals. PDRM telah menangkap 946 individu kerana engkar PKP yang merangkumi 822 individu yang direman dan 124 individu yang dijamin yang diberikan jaminan polis. Daripada 946 individu yang ditahan, 433 ditahan di zon merah kerana engkar PKP. As of Monday, 824 roadblocks were conducted nationwide, where 603,314 vehicles were screened and 52,380 surprise checks were conducted at 6,127 premises. 
Now, the Sri Ismail also called on Malaysians to continue to obey the MCO despite the declining new COVID-19 cases. On another matter, Datu Sri Ismail has clarified that the Kuala Lumpur wholesale market in Selayang, located near the areas of the newly enforced Enhanced Movement Control Order, EMCO, has been ordered to close temporarily for sanitization to be conducted. He said unlike the surrounding areas, which is subjected to a 14-day EMCO, the popular market would only be shut down for four days to allow disinfection operations. Jadi tujuan penutupan tersebut bukan selama 14 hari seperti kita membuat PKPD di kawasan sekitar. Tetapi kita hanya menutup selama 4 hari iaitu sehingga hari Kamis supaya sanitasi boleh dilaksanakan di pasar borong tersebut. He said the decision to temporarily close the market was due to a high number of residents in areas under the EMCO who also worked in the wholesale market. Confusion had arisen over the matter when the wholesale market had been closed on Tuesday, despite the government previously saying the market would operate as usual despite its close proximity to the areas under the EMCO. Meanwhile, residents at Pusat Bandar Utara, Kuala Lumpur and areas surrounding the Selayang Wholesale Market have been urged to remain calm and need not worry about the EMCO that has been put in place. Federal Territories Minister Tan Sri Anwar Musa said the area was put under the EMCO as a preventive measure and was not reflective of a large magnitude COVID-19 outbreak in the area. Walaupun angkanya peringkat awalan hanya 20, Kita terus mengambil keputusan untuk kita periksa ke semua sekali 15,000 orang. Ha, ini jarang dibuat oleh mana-mana negara. Uh, tapi barangkali uh, orang awam bila dengar begitu, apakah dah berlaku satu outbreak besar-besaran di, di Selayang, di Pasar Borong? Sebenarnya tidak. Uh, outbreak Kita dah belajar daripada apa yang dilalui di, di, di Masjid Sri Petaling. He said mass screenings on some 16,000 residents from Pusat Banda Utara and areas surrounding the Selayang wholesale market had begun on Tuesday, targeting between 1,500 and 2,000 tests daily. A sub-crisis management centre has also been set up in the area and three commanders from the police, army and Kuala Lumpur City Hall will be in charge. He said this to reporters after an interview session with TV Tiga's morning talk show, Malaysia Hari Ini, on Tuesday. Malaysia reported 54 more COVID-19 recoveries to give the country a total of 3,349 full recoveries, or a rate of 61.1% of all cases detected. Health Director General Dr. Dr. Nur Hisham Abdullah also disclosed three more COVID-19 deaths as of Tuesday, bringing the total to 92. Dalam tempoh beberapa hari ini, bilangan kes harian menunjukkan trend penurunan yang amat memberangsangkan. Namun begitu, Kementerian Kesihatan telah mengesan sejumlah kes positif COVID-19 yang melibatkan rakyat Malaysia yang baru pulang daripada luar negara. Perkara ini telah dijangka memandangkan lebih daripada 180 negara di seluruh dunia telah terkesan akibat pandemik COVID-19. The Health DG noted that the number of active cases is at 2,041 and they have been isolated and are under treatment. Of the 57 new cases reported, 18 are imported cases by Malaysians who returned from abroad and the other 39 are local transmission. At present, 43 patients are in the intensive care unit with 27 needing breathing aid. Meanwhile, Dr. Dr. Nur Hisham stressed that the government must not allow a balik kampung rush to happen when allowing university students to return to their hometowns. He said there needs to be proper scheduling in releasing some 100,000 students from their campuses. 
More importantly, we should not repeat the mistake in terms of uh, home, home rush, for example. So at least a plan, strategic planning of how they can be, uh, how they can go back to their own hometown, etc. So I think we are doing that and together with the MKN. So that's, uh, that's he said there was no cluster detected among the students so far, and the health ministry will screen the students before they are sent home. Whilst Malaysia has been recognised as one of the most successful nations in containing the COVID-19 outbreak, Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin on Tuesday reiterated that the fight against the pandemic is far from over. He said there are many things that still need to be done in combating the virus that had so far killed 92 people in Malaysia. Tan Sri Muhyiddin, in a posting on his Facebook account, said he had a video conferencing session with medical officers from the Sungai Buloh Hospital, headed by its director, Dr. Kuldip Kaur. He said he had relayed to them that the world recognized Malaysia's capability in preventing the virus from further escalating in the country. The Prime Minister stressed that such a feat is possible due to the efforts displayed by the health personnel and other frontliners who have successfully helped to implement the measures undertaken by the government. Tan Sri Muhyiddin also recorded his appreciation on behalf of the government to health personnel and other frontliners, who he described as the unsung heroes of the nation. Apart from the health frontliners, Tan Sri Muhyiddin also extended his appreciation to the police, members of the Malaysia Armed Forces, People's Volunteer Corps, Civil Defence Force and other security and enforcement agencies. He also said he was informed that there was sufficient supply of personal protective equipment at hospitals at the moment compared to the period when the virus was first detected in our country. A total of 1.5 million applications for the Employees Provident Fund's EPF Isla Starry facility for May have been approved involving withdrawals totaling 702 million ringgit. Finance Minister Dato Sri Tanku Zafrul Aziz also said that 5.2 billion ringgit of first phase of Bantuan Prihatin national payments were made to 7.6 million recipients. Saya percaya ramai rakyat yang bertanya bilakah permohonan baru dan rayuan BPN akan diumumkan. Saya berharap saudara-saudari di rumah dapat bersabar sedikit lagi sehingga 20 April 2020 ni lebih 3 juta permohonan baru dan rayuan telah diterima. Pegawai di LHDN sedang berusaha sedaya upaya untuk mengesah dan menyemak maklumat. Meanwhile, loans totaling 2.7 billion ringgit have been approved for more than 5,000 small and medium enterprises under the easy financing facility for SMEs administered by Bank Nagara. He also said the government will accelerate the project documentation preparation and initiate an online balloting process. This is to ensure continuation in economic activities, especially small-scale projects which have been affected by the Movement Control Order MCO. After the break, man opts for jail after pleading guilty to movement control order violation. Details next. Hello, it's Anita Wu, and on behalf of the entire Nightline team, I'd like to say a very big thank you to all the frontliners, to all those performing their duties at this time, this very difficult and uncertain time. They're risking their lives so that ours can be saved. So all we ask of you is to stay home, and that's all we need to do to do our part. They're risking theirs to save ours. Let's not forget that. So very big thank you once again to all the doctors, nurses, medical officers, everyone who's in the front line, janitors, those who are collecting our bins, anyone who's out there right now serving their duty. Thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts. Welcome back. 
The Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC, detained a trader on Monday for allegedly offering a bribe to a Kluang Municipal Council enforcement assistant as an inducement not to take action against him for violating the Movement Control Order MCO directives. The man, 36, who sells communications equipment, was arrested at the Kluang MACC office at 2 p.m. to assist in the investigation into an alleged bribe amounting to 500 ringgit. He was later released on bail after his statement was taken and the case was being investigated under the MACC Act 2009. Earlier, the man was issued a compound of 1,000 ringgit by the MPK for ignoring the second notice by operating his business during the MCO period. Meanwhile, MACC Investigation Division Director Dato Nur Aslan Muhammad Razali, when contacted, confirmed the arrest. He also urged all parties not to engage in any corrupt activities, as the MACC would take action against any complaints of corruption received during the MCO period. In Selangor, a delivery man who was filmed verbally abusing police after being stopped during the movement control order was sentenced by the Ampang Magistrates Court to one month's jail after he asked to be imprisoned instead of paying a fine. 29-year-old Alif Amarudin pleaded guilty to moving around in an infected area without permitted reasons in Pandan Chahaya at 10 a.m. on April 17th. The offence carries a maximum fine of 1,000 ringgit or six months imprisonment or both if convicted. Magistrate Farah Nasiha Anwa then passed the jail sentence after the suspect said he would not be able to be a he would not be able to afford to pay the fine. The suspect also pleaded guilty to another charge under the penal code for obstructing police from carrying out their duties, which carries imprisonment of up to two years or fine up to 10,000 ringgit or both right. if convicted. The court fixed June 10th for sentencing for this offence. The accused faces three other charges, which he pleaded not guilty to, and those cases are fixed for mention on June 17th. We're going for a short break. When we return, Singapore's COVID-19 lockdown to be extended to June 1st. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Nakia Bashirudin, and I would like to say thank you to all our frontliners, all our essential service workers who are still out there working to make sure that we get the services we need from the hospitals, to the supermarkets, the ones at the petrol stations. Thank you, thank you so much for all your hard work and dedication and sacrifice as we are going through these times. And to everyone who are able to stay at home, please do stay at home so that we can protect our frontliners and make their jobs that little much easier. Thank you, and to everyone, please do take care. We're back with the foreign news. The World Health Organization, WHO, on Tuesday has urged countries to be more cautious in lifting COVID-19 lockdowns, warning of a resurgence of infections if current restrictions are relaxed too soon. Speaking to an online media briefing, its regional director for the Western Pacific, Takeshi Kasai, said lockdown measures have proven effective in slowing down and reducing transmission of the highly infectious disease while easing the burden on the overstretched health system. He also stressed the need to be ready for a new way of living that strikes the right balance between the measures to keep the virus in check and enable vital parts of the economy and society to function. Kasai urged the peoples in the region to protect themselves, their family and their community by physically distancing, frequently cleaning hands, covering coughs and sneezes, and staying at home and away from others, especially when sick. He also urged the private sector to adopt new ways of working, such as establishing staff to work from home where possible, and other measures to reduce the risk of infections in the workplace. Until a vaccine is found, he said this process of adapting to the epidemic will have to become a new normal.
Singapore Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong on Tuesday announced that the country's strict circuit breaker measures to mitigate the COVID-19 pandemic will be extended by four more weeks until June 1, 2020. In his remarks on the COVID-19 situation, Lee said it is aimed to reduce the number of unlinked cases involving those who do not know how they were infected or from whom. Lee also acknowledged that in the wider community, the circuit breaker is starting to have an effect as a number of community cases has fallen in recent days. As at 12 noon Tuesday, Singapore has confirmed an additional 1,111 cases of COVID-19 infections in the Republic, bringing the tally to 9,152. The majority of the new cases were work permit holders resigning in foreign worker dormitories, while 20 cases were Singaporeans or permanent residents. With the latest tally, Singapore has recorded the highest number of cases among ASEAN member countries. Indonesia, meanwhile, has decided to ban mudik, the annual exodus that usually takes place at the end of Ramadan as people return home to their villages across the archipelago in an attempt to curb the spread of the coronavirus in the Southeast Asian nation. President Joko Widodo said earlier he would rely on persuasion to ensure people remained at home, but announced a change of mind on Tuesday. Widodo said the government would set to necessary measures to carry out the ban. Earlier, the government also issued regulations prohibiting civil servants, military and police personnel from returning to their hometowns. Indonesia is the world's biggest Muslim-majority country, and each year, millions take to their trains and roads to go home at the end of the fasting month. To date, some 616 people have already died from coronavirus in the country, the highest toll in Asia outside China, and experts fear the exodus would spread the disease further. Mexico has entered its most serious stage in the spread of the coronavirus, which the government calls Phase 3, as the spread of the virus is intensifying. According to its deputy health minister, Mexico has registered 712 coronavirus deaths and 8,772 infections, with 511 new cases reported on Monday, prompting the government to extend measures to contain the coronavirus until May 30th. Iraq has eased its coronavirus lockdown on Tuesday by letting some businesses reopen and relaxing a month-long curfew on movement imposed to curb the spread of the disease. The authorities acted days before the start of the fasting month of Ramadan, where families tend to go out to shop in the evening. The easing of the curfew is due to last until May 22nd at the end of Ramadan, when it is expected to be tightened again. Lebanon has recorded no new COVID-19 cases in the last 24 hours for the first time during the country's outbreak. According to the country's health ministry, after conducting 487 tests in the last 24 hours, the number of infections stood at 677 with 21 deaths. Under Lebanon's lockdown since mid-March, people can only leave their homes to buy food or medicine, with most businesses closed. An overnight curfew also bans going outside between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. with security forces and forcing curbs. China and South Korea have cast doubt on Tuesday on reports North Korean leader Kim Jong-un was gravely ill after media outlets said he underwent a cardiovascular procedure. According to two South Korean government sources, the report that Kim was in grave danger were not true, while the presidential Blue House said there were no unusual signs coming from the North. An official at the Chinese Communist Party's International Liaison Department, which deals with North Korea, meanwhile, said he did not believe Kim was critically ill. Speculation over the state of his health was fueled by his absence from a key anniversary event. While the, with the Daily NK, a specialty website run mostly by North Korean defectors, on Tuesday, citing unidentified sources in the isolated state, saying Kim was recovering at a villa in Mount Kumgong Resort after surgery on April 12th. Still to come, Arsenal's Ozil says no to pay cut. We'll be right back.
we're back with sports football. Mesut Ozil has been revealed as one of three Arsenal players not to agree to a 12.5% pay cut amid the coronavirus pandemic. The club's highest paid player with a salary of £350,000 per week said he may be willing to do it in the future but did not want to rush into a decision. Arsenal issued a statement on Monday evening confirmed that they had reached a voluntary agreement with its first team players, head coach and core coaching staff to reduce their annual earnings during the suspension of the Premier League due to the global pandemic. The deal is expected to help support the club at this critical time and means Arsenal follow Southampton and West Ham in reaching such an agreement, although both teams have deferred wages of their playing staff rather than actually cutting them. Ozil, however, was identified as one of the three players that had rejected the proposal. He said he wanted to see the full impact of the pandemic on the club's financials and urge his teammates to respect his decision. Both Arsenal and Ozil's agent, Dr. Erkut Sojit, had refused to comment. The Gunners are the first club to take these measures after 10 days of talks that initially saw the playing staff reject the 12.5% cut, which will be in place for 12 months until March 2021. However, Arsenal will repay the difference if they qualify for the Champions League this season and in that instance would also pay a more than US$123,000 bonus. Any player sold for profit in the meantime will also be given a full refund. Now let's take a look at what has been installed on the front pages of Malaysia's main newspapers for Wednesday, April 22nd. The New Straits Times focuses on the call for all Malaysians to remain vigilant as the fight against the COVID-19 continues. While the Harian Metro highlights on Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri's stern warning to all to abide by the MCO rules despite the decrease in the number of new COVID-19 cases. Brita Harian puts the government's plan to allow university students to return home on its front page. With a report on the struggle of migrant workers in Malaysia amid the COVID-19 outbreak taking the center stage of the Malaysian Reserve. Do get your, do get your copies today or subscribe to the e-paper versions. And as the COVID-19 frees many tourism-related services, two of France's most popular seaside resorts lie deserted while the nation remains on lockdown from confinement orders. At this time of the year, tourists would normally be flocking to Etretat, best known for its chalk cliffs and the internationally renowned resort Deauville. Let's take a look as a drone captures the empty shores of the northern coast. With that, I'm Nakia Bashirudin. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and do stay at home.